Hello everyone, I'm here with Ron Placone, net neutrality activist and friend of the show. How's it going, Ron? Good, Mike. How are you, man? I'm doing well, man. So you are here to talk about the next big event concerning net neutrality because, as many people know, the fight is still going on. It's an ongoing process. It's a legal battle. But Ron is teaming up with Fight for the Future, which is a pro-net neutrality organization, and they are planning another day of action. So, Ron, let me hand this off to you and let everyone know what this is about. Yes. So on June 11th, it will mark one year since the FCC repealed net neutrality, the Trump FCC repealed net neutrality, which, you know, as I, I know, uh, pretty much all your viewers and listeners know, net neutrality is what assures we have a free and open Internet. Without it, the Internet will not look it will be an unrecognizable Internet. That's the potential if we lose net neutrality. Uh, so. Since that time, as you indicated, we've been fighting very hard. There have been state bills. There have been uh, attempts to get Congress to overturn what the FCC did. Uh, there's been a growth of municipal broadband. There's been all kinds of fights uh, going on here. One of those fights was to save the Internet bill. That bill was just a three-page bill. I know you covered it a lot on the Humanist Report. I covered it on Get Your News On with Ron. And that bill basically said, hey, those net neutrality, uh, that repeal of net neutrality, we're nixing that. We're going back to what we had. We're getting net neutrality back. It was a three-page bill. It was very simple. It passed the House, but then Mitch McConnell promised that it's dead on arrival in the Senate. So unfortunately, what we've seen now is that some of the Democrats have kind of uh, withered a little bit, and they're saying, well, we're willing to compromise on this. And again, as we both know, there have been some quote-unquote compromise net neutrality bills that Republicans have proposed that don't give us net neutrality at all. If we don't have Title II protection, we don't have net neutrality. It's that simple. So Fight for the Future is organizing an epic live stream on June 11th to let the FCC and Congress know that we the people demand net neutrality. Net neutrality has over 80% support amidst uh, citizens. It is extremely popular all across the political aisle. Um, and it's essential to the free and open internet that has become an essential tool in our lives. So. We're going to be streaming, and you can tune into that stream at epiclivestream.com. The URL is real easy. It's just epiclivestream.com. There's going to be guests throughout the day. I'm going to be there. Mike, I'm hoping you're going to be able to make some appearances. Yeah. Um, and it, it's going to be a really cool time. Fight for the Future uh, does amazing work. I'm, I'm honored to be collaborating with them on this project. We've been uh, really going full speed ahead, trying to build up as much momentum for this as we can. We've been flooding Reddit, Twitter, Facebook. We've been contacting people to get involved. We've been, you know, I've been recording segments on this everywhere that'll have me. Um, I've been calling out every favor I can from every content creator I know, yourself included. And uh, we really just want to make this an amazing thing. So epic live stream dot com for the day of action for net neutrality. Uh, and if you don't mind, I also got to mention I'll be in Washington, D.C. that day. And we're still working out the details on this, but it looks like we might be uh, giving a petition to Mitch McConnell's office that will have signatures and so forth of people demanding net neutrality. So it looks like we're going to try to do that and we're going to try to live stream that event uh, as part of the live stream on June 11th. And the reason I'm going to be in D.C. is because we have the East Coast leg of the Progressive Comedy Tour right after June 11th. June 12th, we'll be doing D.C., June 13th, Baltimore, June 14th, 15th, Philly, June 16th, we're in New Haven, Connecticut, June 17th, New York City, and June 19th, Boston, Massachusetts. Tickets for all those shows are available at ronplacone.com. Come hang out with me because it's really cool to work on this campaign. It's been, a, it's been a long haul, and it'll be fun once it's all over to just hit the road for a little bit. So come grab some tickets, all you out on the East Coast, ronplacone.com and epiclivestream.com on June 11th on the Internet. Be there. And you can go there now to submit your comments to be read during the stream. Well, that's that's a lot. You are all over the country, so uh, I commend you <laughs> for doing that because getting me to leave my house to go to the grocery store is a lot. Um, so the fact that you're doing this is phenomenal. And if you actually got footage of you delivering a petition to Mitch McConnell, I'm assuming one of his aides, that would be amazing because really he's the one obstacle. Like in the event this was voted on, if the Save the Internet Act was voted on in the Senate, in the event a vote were allowed, what do you think the chances would be of that passing? I think there's a chance. I don't think it's a very high chance, and I don't think there's like a, a very high chance of Trump signing it either. Right. But 
what that would give you is it would really give leverage heading into 2020. Uh, it's incredibly unpopular to go against net neutrality um, on both sides, on the left and the right, to go against net neutrality. So this is something that, you know, the Democrats could, I we can't guarantee they will, but they could, uh, you know, really bank on and really make it a big platform point. Uh, the only candidate who has spoken about universal broadband across the country thus far, to my knowledge, uh, has been Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders talked about it a little bit in Iowa. Um, he actually brought up a lot of kind of key issues that often get overlooked because of everything that's going on right now. But there's still some very important key issues. He talked about getting back to local farming. Uh, which I think is a huge issue in our country that that often goes on, you know, not talked about, but it would solve a lot of other problems, too, as, as far as food deserts and stuff like that. Uh, and he brought up the idea of universal broadband across the country, which, of course, uh, would be the ultimate way to preserve a free and open Internet. And, and, you know, the way I look at it, and we've had this conversation, Mike, if we don't have a solid communication platform, which today is the Internet, that's what we rely on. How can we get anything else done? You know, if we're just uh, basically just tethered to the corporate media, uh, think of all the information and all the ideas and all the perspectives that would just knock it out there. We wouldn't have had a clue what was going on at Apple. We yeah. wouldn't have had a clue what was going on with, with Black Lives Matter. We wouldn't have had a clue uh, what was going on with any teacher strike anywhere. You know, it's the blogosphere and it's citizen journalism that gives us access to all this stuff. So without a free and open Internet – you know, we're screwed. Like, yeah. like the idea of any type of positive change, it is just that much harder. So, yeah, to me, I've been saying that the Internet now has become so ingrained in our lives that it is inextricably linked to democracy itself. So it's crucial and you've got to maintain openness 100 percent, you know, no if, ands or buts. So the way that I kind of view this and um, you can kind of add to this is that Mitch McConnell is kind of protecting Republicans and even some Democrats, arguably, who don't want to put their name on net neutrality because there's a lot of people being bankrolled by the industry. Comcast donates, AT&T, Verizon donates. So if they can, can kind of not vote, then they shield themselves in a way. Is is that kind of what you see, or is Mitch McConnell just being a douche and blocking everything like he usually does? Because I think this is a little bit more tactical. Hey, Lucy. Well, if those, are my, if, if those are my only two choices, I'm going to go with both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, no, you, you make an excellent point, and that's very, very true, uh, of course. Now, that, 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 that's not to say he isn't also just a douche. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Feel like, I feel like you nailed it on both of those, <laughs> but <laughs> Lucy agrees. Yeah. She likes you, man. She's just chilling here. Lucy and I go way back. Lucy, do you have anything to add to the conversation? <laughs> no, per, she's per. just chilling. Per, she per. wants a free and open internet. Um, But yeah, like, I think that is very true, because yeah— it would have a long hurdle to overcome in the Senate, and it, it would certainly not be likely to get a signature from Trump, but it would then give leverage, um, you know, for pro-net neutrality candidates, which there are a couple pro-net neutrality Republicans out there even. There aren't many, Absolutely. but there are a couple. Yeah. So, you know, it would kind of uh, have a good amount of political leverage going into 2020. And if we can hold the line until 2020, hopefully something positive happens, um, and then we're able to get solid net neutrality on the books. So, you know, we have everything to gain by having this day of action and telling uh, we, the people of the internet, telling Congress, telling the FCC, we demand net neutrality. We're not going to settle for less. You're not going to be able to pull the wool over your, our eyes the way you were with the Telecom Act in 1996. We're awake, and we're not going to back down. Yeah. The reason why I say that is um, it's because everyone wants you to think that they support net neutrality. Like even Marshall Blackburn, I'm sure everyone remembers, she proposed like the shell net neutrality bill that actually was anti-net neutrality. But everybody yeah. wants you to think that they support net neutrality. But if they don't support the Save the Internet Act, they don't. And I don't think they want to show right. their cards just yet. So one more time before you go, Ron, tell us where to find the live stream and uh, let people know how they can help spread the word. EpicLivestream.com. That is the URL for the live stream. It's just EpicLivestream.com. June 11th is the day, a day of action. It's going to start around 8 in the morning Eastern time and go all day. Uh, how you can help, please do share that URL, spread that URL. Uh, you can go to that URL now and submit comments if you want them to be read. 
Um, if you want to participate in the stream itself, there's an email where you can do that as well. Um, and yeah, that's happening on June 11th, epiclivestream.com. I'll be on the East Coast right after that for the Progressive Comedy Tour, romplacone.com for those tickets. And uh, yeah, as, uh, as Fight for the Future likes to say, it's up to us to keep the internet weird. And that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. And look, it's important that we make a lot of noise because, I mean, with, with any political issue, the momentum kind of tends to die down after a while. And currently we're in this stage in the net neutrality fight where we can't really do too much, right? It's it's happening legally. We are pressuring lawmakers and whatnot. But if we still make noise as individuals and let people know, let lawmakers know in particular that we still care deeply about net neutrality, then I think that this benefits all of us. So June 11th, um, I'll be there. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Kudos to Fight for the Future. They have been on it ever since this issue became an issue. And I really appreciate everything that they're doing. Yeah, me too. They do some great work. And it's been uh, it's been a privilege to work with them. And yeah, epiclivestream.com. Mike and myself, we'll see you all on June 11th. Be there. Be there or I'm going to be very disappointed in you. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> Mike is a total loser so don't hit the subscribe button okay and whatever you do folks do not hit the notification bell either Mike treats me so unfairly <laughs> <laughs>